this is take command and this we do this every month with a little bit of a flavor to it uh this month we're doing take command of your business it's all about the technology as a tool but we want to teach you how to use this tool to uh better your business candace was gracious if i could speak correctly today was gracious enough to come on and teach you how to build a million dollar pipeline and she's shared with me her outline and she's ready to rock and roll this. So Candice, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, who you are, and go ahead and roll with your uh, presentation. Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Candice Thargo. I am out of the Treasure Coast Market Center in Stewart, Florida. So right on that coast, South Florida. <laughs> so I am the MCT for our market center, um, for Safe Harbor Group, for our five market centers. And we have other MCTTs on here that are with Safe Harbor as well. So let's get the party started. So today we're gonna to do build a million dollar pipeline. So this is also, we're gonna be creating opportunities as well, which is your transactions. So we can get to our goal of net to, mil to net a million dollars. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen with y'all. All right, do share. Lovely, let me just move this over. If anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand. And I will try to answer them. If you're unable to chat, just throw it in chat and I will try to respond to your questions as we go along. All right. So I'm currently in my um, ATL's account because he actually has a working pipeline and actually has his goals. So today we're going to be creating um, an opportunity. And then we're going to talk about navigating for your pipeline and gaining that potential income so we can net that million dollars. So let's get started. So we're gonna head on over, you can click on KW. We're gonna head on over to our opportunities page. So this is our opportunities um, homepage. All right, so this is our homepage and this is our pipeline. So we have a pipeline for our listings our buyers and our leases. So landlords and tenants share a pipeline. I can head back up to the top. So we are gonna create an opportunity. So we can click on create opportunity. You're gonna choose the market center that you're gonna be working out. Everything with a little red asterisk means it is a required field. So our opportunity type. So there is four opportunity types that you can choose from. You can choose listing, which means you are representing a seller. Buyer, which means you are representing your buyer, landlord and tenant. Um, landlord is when you are managing a property for listing onto the MLS and tenant means you are representing and you're looking for a rental for them. So the difference between these is listing will have three folders, buyer will have two folders, landlord will have three, and your tenant will have two. So if you have a listing in the landlord, you will have a listing folder an under contract folder and a closed folder. And if you have buyer and tenant, they are gonna have an under contract folder and a closed folder as well. But there is a consultation um, above both these folders for the buyer and tenant. But most of the time you won't be submitting anything to your uh, compliance officer. You'd be submitting mainly in your under contracts. And we're gonna click listing today so we can have all three of those folders in for you. So now I have my listing, and now we're going to add who our clients is from our database that we've been growing. All right, so I'm going to look for my name, and there is my name. And if you had a co-lister and you had in your relations of the spouse, you would type in, um, I don't have anyone right now tied to me. So you would put the other spouse's name if there are two buyers or two sellers on the property or who is buying. Right. So now we're gonna head on over to originate opportunity to name. So we're gonna put the name of the address because this is easier for administrative staff when we are like looking for and checking to see if we can get your DA going. So I'm gonna put 1806, Bay Shore. Drive. And you don't have to put the full address. Um, most of the time, if it's a listing or a buyer, I recommend putting listing or buyer next to it. And if you do have the estimated close date, if it is a buyer, I recommend putting them in. So you can just fill it right in this calendar and check which month applies to you. Um, estimated list price is 450. 
and the commission rate, this is what you would be receiving. So I will be receiving 3%. There it goes. So opportunity phase. So this goes with the pipeline, as you can see, I know it's a little faded out right here. You'll see cultivate, appointment, and active is right behind this section right here of our pipeline. So you can choose what part of the pipeline is this starting? Like, am I trying to cultivate and try to nurture this relationship so I can get on to the next phase of my pipeline to go into appointment and then into my active? So I'm gonna leave and cultivate so we can have the very beginning. So it's like, okay, I'm trying to get this listing and cultivate that relationship to make it two way. So I'm gonna leave it on cultivate for now. And now we're gonna like, what kind uh, within this phase, cause there's three phases within cultivate. There's watch, nurture, hot. So I'm gonna put this bad boy to hot. So you're gonna click hot. So next we're gonna click create. And this is going to create my opportunity or my transaction. And this is a great start so we can build our pipeline. Hey, Candace, before we yes. go, um, Lainey's got a question. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I just have a question. When you have the co list at the details, could that, could it, could so if the, so say it was, um, an 85 year old man that owned the condo, but his daughter was the POA, would she be the co list since she's the POA? Yes. Thank you. You, you want their contact information there for sure. So I would definitely put a co list in there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. And I'm like, this, like, I didn't know exactly what <laughs> okay, happened. Candace is a market center tech trainer. She doesn't practice real estate. I do practice real estate though. So I'm sorry. It was a power of attorney. She's the daughter's the power of attorney. So I just didn't know if a POA would go in there. So, okay. Thank you. She would be the co, um, the co seller. List. So she would definitely be thrown in there. Okay, she has thank you. the authorization to sign. So you definitely want their information in there. All right. Thank you. All right. So we are now, since we created our opportunity, Um, you, Lee, you don't need to create um, opportunities for every lead that you receive, but if you do want to, you can. So you can just be on that ball and ready to go so you can get right into the next phase. And with the opportunities, you can create them either in your contacts or you can go to the actual opportunities phase. Like my preference is I usually go for the contacts and create them. But today I'm doing a little different so we can show more of that pipeline. I think the important thing there is also to understand what the difference is between a lead and an opportunity. Um, and that's dependent upon your business. Command was built to be flexible so that you could control that. So like to me in my business, the difference between a lead and an opportunity is a lead hasn't been contacted or had a two-way conversation with, with. Once I have a two-way conversation, they're no longer a lead anymore. They're a contact for me. And if they say they have or express interest in buying, selling, investing in real estate, to me, that's now an opportunity. So that's the transition there, if that makes sense. But however you run your business, you can change it to that. All right, so let's continue. So now we are on our details page. So this is a great little tool that Command provides. So if you have multiple transactions going on, this is a great way for you to manage and keep everything organized and keep you on track. So you're gonna see the general information page and we come over to the right hand side and we hover over, we're gonna see this little stylus pop up and also a pop up for our properties. So if I click on this stylus and I can change the name of my opportunity name, the only thing that does not change, you can change everything on this, you can change who the seller is, all that good jazz. But the only thing you cannot change on this opportunity is the type that it is because this will predict on what type of checklist you will be selecting in the next page and we're gonna go next to. So we can change the phase. Yes, you can add multiple opportunities for the same name. One time I had like six opportunities for this teaching for our class. So you can add as many opportunities, but I recommend kind of keeping um, clean and simple so you're more streamlined so if you had a buyer that you were representing, 
you can have like to say, um, God forbid that that um, contract fell for it. You would archive that opportunity and create a new opportunity for them. So you have a fresh start. Latest opportunity. Why is it first time? Why is it all opportunities? This is You can have, uh, if they're buying multiple properties, yes, you can have all those opportunities, but I'm just saying like if a deal fell through, I would archive them. But you can have multiple opportunities if they are an investor buying properties, you can have multiple ones. And this is also, if you are having an investor, the more details you have, the better um, for reaching, keeping them all separated by tracking them. Because each property is tied to an opportunity. All right, so we can change this opportunity phase in detail page and also you can go in the pipeline. I wanna show that little trick so it makes life so much easier. Oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna drop on down and we'll see we now have all four of the phases in our pipeline. We have cultivate, we have appointment, we have active, under contract and close. So if you're submitting anything to your MCs, we can see you're active and under contract. And if the tra um, your transaction is closed, we cannot see that. So if you wanna submit something for compliance, you wanna keep that bad boy in active and under contract in order for us to see it. And also close is for your own. Um, you can sit, have it sit closed for as long as you wish to. It's a matter of how you wanna run your business. So I wanna move this to active for fun. And now, see how, now there's within another stage, now I have a different thing, cause I switched from active to another stage. So staging showing, I'm gonna leave in staging for now. All right, time frame of months, estimated close date. So anything that applies to you, uh, when you have a buyer, what your contract, so you would put your estimated close date in here. The agreement one, so when your contract starts, start date was you can put it right in there my commission and i'm going to click save so the next part we're going to head on over to property so i'm going to put in my address okay, sure. right so this is actually feeding from google um, for address searches so if i click on my that on my address it's going to autofill everything else in and we're going to click save because this will apply when you're doing commission and also keeps so you know what the actual address is and this will feed into your DocuSign room. So everything from your general information and property and seller will feed into your DocuSign rooms. So now you have a seller's worksheet. So if you want to fill this out so you can have more information, um, descriptions, if you want to add additional notes like the chandelier does not convey you can put it right in there. <coughs> so now we're gonna head on over to documents. So now we're gonna pick our checklist. So what type of property is this? So we're gonna pick our checklist and this is for compliance. So is it a residential 77 and older? Is it newer than a 78? Is it vacant land, commercial or outgoing referral? So this property is newer than a 78 and we're gonna select on that one. So this is generating creating my folders for me. Um, in my market center, we have not pre-assigned yet um, the pre like for the right of sale and the under contract folder. We haven't had a chance to map it. So in your market center, if your MCAs have started, there now there are certain forms that would just auto-generate when you click start a transaction um, for your DocuSign rooms. So here is our listed folder, our under contract, and our closed. So um, everything you see is that as a requirement, you're gonna see required. It needs the MLS private report of the active listing. Um, exclusive right of sale listing agreement is required and anything that's conditional for this listing. We head on over to our under contract you're going to see um, the pending that you're going to need the prior report for from MLS, the full details, our contract, 
and conditional KW buyer disclosure, sell, um, seller's property disclosure will eventually be required. Um, also, if you do have a condominium right, if it is a condo, it will be required in your compliance officer for your market center. Our compliance officer is Jim. So I'm gonna say Mr. Jim. <laughs> So we're going to pretend to submit something. So we're going to hit listed. You can also create and do your e-signatures for DocuSign, fill out all your paperwork. But we're going to go as if we have everything signed and filled out and I'm just submitting stuff to compliance, but I'm not actually going to submit because Jim would be like, what is this, Candace? <laughs> All right, so now here's my MLS prior report. So I'm going to click add a file. I'm gonna click right here. So we can pull from our PCs from our drive and you can just click browse. And if I had a DocuSign, it would pop up like right next to manual. If I create a DocuSign room. So we're actually gonna click manual. So I'm gonna click browse and I'm gonna see what I got on my computer. Go to downloads. Oh, I actually go to sign contract because it actually applies to it. Under contract. To do going to add our contract. I'm going to click browse. I'm going to head over into downloads and I am going to attach this contract and click open. So now this is uploading this PDF into the spot that I wish it to go. Come on, computer, you can do it. All right, now we're gonna click Assign. So now I have my as-is contract in the right spot. So always review when you upload documents um, to submit for compliance, just always review it. So you're gonna click on that document and we're gonna scroll through all the pages and see everything is signed. And just double check your work on anything you do and also when you send for signature as well. It's always best to double check so you're not having to go really fast for a step and then have to take three steps back. So my document is filled out properly. Everything looks good. And all we gotta do is submit to MC. And then we just wait to see what they come back with. And see if we get approved, reject it, and the reason why it is rejected. So if you ever got an item returned and there's notes with it, you can click on that document and head on over to document review. And this is where the compliance officer will add, like say, um, missing initials or online page, everything, and they'll say what it is and what they need of you in, in these comments section right here. When you submit each document as they get them signed, or are we we to send them all together? No, there is um, for your listing agreement and your as as is contracts. You do have to submit them within 48 hours of execution. So as long as you get those forms sent in first, everything else can follow. Just as long as those get submitted ASAP, you should be good. All your compliance officers will say, oh, just say return or need additional things. Um, I recommend doing at least like 10 days out from your closing date if you are doing a buyer. So when your um, MCA creates your DAs, we have those done in advance for you. And also everything was submitted, everything is approved by your, M um, your compliance officer, the MCA will go ahead, create your DA, and they will move your DAs that have been created and move them into your close folder for you and be uploaded on your behalf. So you're not having to go and do it twice. Does anyone have any more questions before we move on to the pipeline? I do. Go for so, it. So my last, my first transaction, I didn't have to submit it. He pulled it, so it must have gotten flagged. So my next one which i have right now i haven't submitted anything and it's past 48 hours i'm going to go submit immediately as soon as i get off this call um all of my items what is the am i going to get in trouble 
because he pulled it the last time it must have gotten flagged through whatever happens in the in that it's like you know oz behind the curtain so mm -hmm. i just don't want to get in trouble because i had no idea laney are you out of the bus palm office no i'm uh the gardens oh uh, your gardens are you mm -hmm. a safe harbor or another the other no, color it's safe, Har safe harbor gardens Okay, so if you just um, reach out to Jim, because Jim Misham is our compliance officer for okay. all five of our market centers. Yeah. Um, and if you have any questions, you can actually, let me show you real quick. Okay. Because Jim is compliance and he is very straight to the point. He does not be around the bush. So if you ever have any questions and you want to reach out to your compliance officers, instead of doing this back and forth with email, you can actually, within the opportunity, send questions to the compliance officer or your MCAs. Okay. So if I was in my under contract and I had a question about my as is contract, you can go right in here. You see add comment. You click add comment, come down here and we're going to go like add and I'm going to look for Mr. Jim Mitchum. So this is going to like send Jim a notification like, Hey, there's a message for you. Okay. in this opportunity. So when he clicks on that notification, it's going to take him directly into this under contract side of this opportunity. And he can see exactly what you're talking about. Okay. That's a game changer. Yeah. This will save you so much time and it's literally direct contact. And Jim's really, and Sharon is his assistant for safe Harbor group. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to him or multiple people. Like if I did at you wanted to reach to Danielle or Janelle, or your MCA would be here. If you have an MCA question, they can answer it for you because they're always checking their command every time. Play check it daily multiple times. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, just shoot Jim or Sharon a message and they will get with you within like 24 hours. Uh, Candace, you have one more question from Carrie. She's got her hand up. Yes. Hi, Candace. Um, I have buyers who have taken on a number of um, showings and now they're ready to make an offer. So when I put that offer in, once it's accepted and it's executed, then I have 48 hours to get it to compliance? Yeah, after it's um, signed on both parties, um, you have within 40 hours to submit it to your compliance officers. Okay, and that's that's with the as is or it's with a listing agreement that is correct okay and then the other question is you mentioned about having multiple opportunities for i've been working with and nurturing these buyers for a little bit of time and they're they've seen a lot of properties to my i mean they've seen about 10 now so when i start to write a contract and i put it into docusign should I just archive the ones? Because by the time they're ready to sign it, it seems like the property's gone. So what should I do with those old contracts that have not been executed? I would archive those opportunities in the DocuSign room so you can have it for record if you do in the well, future. Candace, I would, yes. I would, um, the, their form. So if, if they haven't been signed, they're not actual PDFs that you need to archive anymore. They're just forms that are in there. So just leave the forms there because as soon as you change the details on that opportunity, it'll change all the information on those forms. So you don't have to worry about it. Oh, so when I go back in and I, and I change an address, say for example, they no longer want 123 Happiness Avenue, they want 456 uh, Fabulous Avenue, that DocuSign will automatically... Yeah, you got a sync button right there. So... The sync button in command is a one-way sync. It pushes information from command into DocuSign and it'll update it, that information. You can also go into DocuSign and go to the details section and verify that everything's in there that you need. Um, and once you do that, all, those, all that information gets pulled and put into the documents that you have that are forms within your folders. Also, if you ever do get into a position, I know we're not kind of talking about a DocuSign course right here, but if you do have multiple properties like that in DocuSign best uh, practices to create new folders for each property you make an offer on in there and just close the folder that you're done with. But uh -huh. don't, all, the main folder that's created when you go in there is um, where all your forms live 
And then you can create, again, another folder for each property. And just as you sign them, move all those documents into the signed folder. Okay, we will do. And can you show me that sync that you're talking about or that's in DocuSign? Well, she'd have, if you hit start transaction right there, Candace. And choose DocuSign. Now it's gonna take you to DocuSign, but just go back to command. Now, refresh your screen. You haven't done anything yet, so I don't think it's gonna show up. Did you check your checklist yet? You did. Right next to where the go to transaction button is, there should be a sync button that goes right there as well. Yeah, I don't think his sync is on. I'm using my ACL's account. Okay. Well, oh. in your account, you should have a sync button right there so that you can push the sync button and it will push information from command into DocuSign to update that type of information. That's awesome. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, it's in my account. I don't think he has his turned on. I have to go through it. I don't know if he wants it. <laughs> um, hey, Patricia, you have a question. Uh, yeah, so what we were talking about, it, I had a buyer, so her offer didn't get accepted, so we made another offer, like what you guys were talking about, multiple offers. Isn't it easier to uh, do a new opportunity or? When you're making uh, another offer, is it for a different property, like one, two, three, Palm Lane, yeah. and the offer fell through, and you're talking about a different property? <laughs> Best practice on there, what she's talking about is like if she's making multiple, if it's with the same buyer and you just didn't get it, the best practice is to keep it in there. That way you have record of all your offers that you've made for compliance. So you, where, you see where it says under contract. If you see where it says under contract right there, can you go to that drop down, Candace? Yeah. Where it says under contract. If you click on that, you can add a new version and just continue from there. So you could just name that the new property's okay. name. Okay. That'll give you a whole it's new checklist. So really don't have what was that? We're not hearing you because it's breaking up really bad, but um, if. What I can hear is DocuSign. So what I would suggest in DocuSign is that you just, again, create a new folder based upon that property and use the first folder that's created in there as for your forms. And then the additional folders that you add to that would be based upon the properties that you're making offers on. Hey, Ryan, um, when it comes to the title of the opportunity, then would you recommend that you just keep doing new versions until you win a contract and then yeah. update the name of the opportunity to the one you won? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I typically, if you're working with a buyer, I just keep the name of the uh, opportunity, the buyer's names until we go into contract and then I'll update it. All right, let's move on. And we're going to head on over. We're going to go back into our opportunities page. So now we're going to be checking out our pipeline. So this is where we can reach our goal of a million dollars that we wanted that. So we're going to need 2.4 million in gross um, commission income in order to net a million dollars that we walk in home with. <laughs> so here is our pipeline for listings. So we have cultivate, appointment, active, under contract, and close. So this is going to show all my opportunities in this pipeline. So I currently have 10 in Cultivate, I have six in Active, and also I have my buyer's pipeline as well, wherever on which phase they are. So I'm going to use Uh-oh, sorry. Oh no, why did you log me out?
go back to the opportunities page. So here is our gross income, a potential income that we can earn. So this is throughout all five of these phases. This is potential income I can earn. The probability of earning is at $38,600. And that goes for all three and it breaks it down for you. And these also go on a likely when it's the profitable income. Um, it depends on which phase. So if I go into my cultivate and click on cultivate, and I come on over. So if I have something in the watch phase, it's a 5% likely that this is gonna go to close. So the more down the pipeline that you are, so if I go over to appointment, the percentage raises. So my active is at 50% of probability to close and my negotiating is at 80%. And if I go under contract, I'm at 90%, 90%, 90%, and if this thing, let's see, scroll down. I can move on to finance, clear to close. Right here, and close should give you 100%. So if I am my cultivate phase, and here is all my listings in watch. So here is my watch and all my listings that are in here. So if I was moving a property, like here is one, that's a different one. And we look down here, probable potential, is 36,000 that I'm gonna make in gross commission, which is my 3%, that if I have the listing side, all of them are 3%, this is my potential that I'll be making, and probability is 1,800. But if I move my listing, so if I hover over the listing, and you can move it in the different phases within the pipeline, and I can move it right over here into nurture if it reached another stage. So it should be updating, but it's not. Why is it not changing? Uh, let me refresh my page. It doesn't show, I wonder why. Oh, it didn't give a number. Maybe it's something I have to. There it is. If it's not moving, if you go into it, like right now, here's the arrow, as you can see. And if I move over, I hold my mouse down and you can should be able to move it freely throughout the page. So if I move my listing, this one, nope, that's not what I wanna do, but I didn't wanna open it. Go back. Best practices, they put that little bar on the left side of those cards with the little dots. That's what those are for to indicate that you move it right there. So try to grab it around those six dots right there and then click on it and drag. You actually would, you don't click on it. You just hold your mouse down and you move it around. You can move it around town. So I can move this card into appointments and see how I'm holding the card right now. It's actually highlighting, you see up here, if I hover over this and you can see in the left-hand corner, it's like I can actually drop it in into my appointments and I'll keep it in the cap. Yeah, it should let you refresh the page, and if it's still not allowing you to, um, you can send support and tell them that it hasn't been allowing you to do so. All right, let me go back to the active. So when you move these cards, and you can move within the, fa the, fa the phases within, and you can work down your pipeline, so the more we move it down, the more probability of closing for all of them in a higher income for probability. Let me get back into, do, 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 do. there's something in my under contract, all right? So see how I have moved a couple of my things around just for fun to get this number to change. So the more you get closer to your close, the higher the probability income will increase. And also, if you head over to your reports, 
you can also set a goal for yourself. So right here, like at the beginning of the year, you can set goals to reach. So you did um, your GCI at 2.4 million. So you can net a million. So to say, I think it is a third. So this is also kind of like the MRE book really comes into play and you really actually do visually see it because the pipeline is a great visual reference and so is your reports page. So this will keep you on track of how many listings you need to sell within like do listings, buyers, all that good fun jazz. So if it lets me to do, do, where is it? So if I go into my goals, I click goals and you can set goals right up here if you haven't done so for the year, for this year. If we scroll down, and we're going to see some familiar things right here. Activities breakdown, our goal um, conversion rate, which is great. So you can see how many leads, contacts, appointments set, all that good stuff. And this will feed between the two, your report goals and also your pipelines. So this is to keep you on track so you can reach your goal of netting a million dollars. So this is a great little resource to use. And also if you set your goals, you can click it right here and whatever you wanna do, and it'll break down how many buyers you're gonna need, how many sellers, um, how many points you need to achieve. And if anyone referenced back to the MREA, you'll see on page, they converted it backwards. This triangle was regular, now it's inverted. So it breaks it down the percentage of so you can get to close. So the pipeline is also the visual of going across of the percentage of this is going to close. So if you're at 90, 80 and all the way down, like from five to a hundred percent, it's going to show you the potential of closing. So the amount of contacts you have, the conversion rate to convert them to be a call to be appointment to get that listing or get that buyer everything breaks down for you. So as long as you get your goals set, you can achieve that many dollars. I recommend setting your goals up. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Yes, there's one in there that was a really important one talking about opportunities. If you have two of them, or I'm sorry, if you have the listing and you also get the buyer, how do you set that up? Do you do it as one? Or do you do it as two? And the answer to that one is you do two separate opportunities, one for the listing and one for the buyer. And remember, those opportunities are connected to that person and it shows up in their timeline. So that's important. It's important for our AI to be able to read that information. And it's the way KW created it because in a lot of states, it's illegal for them to not be doing that. They have to have compliance on both ends. I know in our state, it's maybe not as important, but uh, in others it is. Yeah, and also if you have the two opportunities, it's great so you know how much you're going to be reaching your goal for buyer and seller. Yeah, it just makes it much easier to track the information that's coming forth. Also, when you go into your client's uh, card and you see um, exactly what opportunities you've done with them, it just makes it that much easier to track. Yeah, in our market centers, they changed it. They keep going between like only one opportunity and then two opportunities because of the numbers. Yeah, well, Kel, as far as KWRI is concerned, they're, they ask that everybody does the two separate opportunities. Okay. It speeds the machine a lot better that we can get a better representation of what's being done. And that's gonna be helpful to you when you're doing deals later and Kelly's in the background working and then she all of a sudden starts suggesting things to you because of that. And if we don't put two in, it's not going to be as accurate. That's just one piece of that puzzle. That's not the whole picture. Is there a way to run a report the latest quarter statistics and no close were set? I'm just looking for actual activity in the last quarter. I would reach, uh, Julie, I would really reach out to your MCT and have them sit down with you if you, can put in the chat what market center you're at with. We'll go ahead and find out who that is and get you in contact with them because they can sit down and go over that report section in detail with you. Um, that'd be great. Tampa Property, so that'd be Andrew Hicks. He'd be able to sit down with you, Julie, and uh, make sure that um, you know how to use that report section really well because that is important and I agree with you. But I would definitely 
suggest that you go and set your uh, goals because that goes back to what this class is called. How do you build a million dollar uh, pipeline? You got to fill it first, right? And how do you know how much you need? You got to go into your report section and um, do your goals so you know exactly how to get there. You got to know what the big picture is. Work backwards or back engineer, however you want to call it. So that's what the report section does for you. And then you look at this pipeline. As you can see there, you've got your pro potential and your probable incomes. You can track that all the time. If you go further down, you can see them combined. At the bottom of the screen that she's got up. Can you scroll down a little bit to show that? Yeah, of course. There you go. So there's your total right there, your ratio. So your potential and your probable is right there. It's almost like gamifying this so you can compete against yourself to see how well you're doing. And um, it's important. You want to know how much you're making. If, you're, if you've got a goal to make a million dollars this year, then right there it shows that you're not on track and there's going to be things that you need to do to get there. And if you go into that report section, it tells you exactly right there um, how many leads you need and um, how many transactions you need to get from that. It's all based upon your conversion ratios. And the reports page is a really great page. Like I was messing with it like um, last week and it really breaks everything down for you. Like your goals and it's really easy to create your goals. So you just put it right in there and it walk you through that line of it always like defaults to, so you net a million dollars. So it's always going to say your GCI is going to be 2.4 mil. So you can get that and then you're going to be netting a million dollars in there. And we're constantly adding stuff in here too. Just like the gut lead route. And they're about to add, if you're on a team, they're about to add the team section in there. So you can see reports on your team, see who's doing what specifically. So I'm trying to get to yeah. like where you're, I think it's the dashboard that has like your health score. Here it is. Um, if you go to your dashboard, you can see how many contacts you have, how many leads you have. Um, this will also be a great way so you can see what you are. And also, I think it does compare to the rest of the market center. This one doesn't pull it up for some reason. Anyways, we're, we're getting close on time. The main thing I wanted to point out is you, um, to net a million dollars, you got to fill your pipeline. You, and the best way to be able to net a million dollars is also to know your business. So follow what she's showing you right here by looking at these reports, setting your goals. Once you've set your goals, go through your pipeline, start feeding your pipeline. My suggestion to you is, let me, um, yeah, make sure that you are um, putting your contacts in there. And once you got your contacts in there, you have to make sure that if they're a lead, that means you, in my book, that means that you have not had a two-way conversation with them. Once you have a two-way conversation with them, they become a contact. And if they are interested in real estate, then you put them in as an opportunity. That way you can track them in your pipeline. Uh, you put them in so that you can cultivate them and then move them through the pipeline as you go. That should be your game is to move them through that pipeline and get your probable income and your potential income to change. You want to keep on feeding that so that your potential becomes bigger, but you want to close them too to get your potential, your probable much, much higher towards your goal. That's, that's feeding your pipeline. That's building a big business. And all the people we've had on as our um, guest speakers, they're building their businesses like that. Like Justin, he's feeding that pipeline constantly. That's their main goal is to get leads, right? It's leads, listings, leverage. That's the name of the game. It's MREA. Mm -hmm.